In a survey conducted in 2005, it was found that roughly 5% of the forests of the United States remain under or unexplored. It's surprising that some places in nature remain untouched by humanity. To think that there are still areas where mankind is a visitor is humbling. What could be hiding in these vast stretches of forest? Some believe there is something out there, something large, hairy, and strangely, human. Bigfoot, also known as Sasquatch and about a hundred other names, is allegedly a massive bipedal creature, often described as being well over seven feet tall, with thick fur covering its body. It has been described as benevolent by some, malevolent by others. Its stomping grounds cover essentially the entire country, with reports coming in from Oregon all the way to Maine. These days, we just assume Bigfoot has been around forever. We never stop to wonder where the mythos began and why people are so convinced that it's out there. To understand our modern version of Sasquatch, we have to go back just a bit to 1958. A small paper, the Humboldt Times, published a letter from a group of loggers who found a giant footprint at their logging site. A small, goofy bit of news on a slow day somehow captured people's imaginations. The Humboldt Times saw the success of the story and doubled down, following up with the loggers who, at the time, had begun calling the creature Bigfoot. This, of course, was not the first report of a mysterious wild man in the U.S., but as author Joshua Blue Buzz explains, There are various wild man myths from all over the world, People go back and they dig through old newspapers and stuff and find scattered reports of a wild man here and a wild man there, but it doesn't really coalesce into a general discussion until the 50s. From there, Bigfoot had captured the cultural zeitgeist. Popular men's magazines at the time were publishing Bigfoot stories weekly. The untamed wilderness and the creatures it may have held were fascinating in a time where people thought the wild wilderness had been conquered. It allowed the average person to imagine taming a great wilderness and bringing down whatever ten-foot-tall guardian those spaces may have had. Eventually, idle fantasy became a flirtation with serious investigation. The men's magazines of the 50s and 60s gave way to the less-than-scientifically rigorous documentaries of the 70s. In 1972, the legend of Boggy Creek would present itself as a true story of the Falk Monster, a Bigfoot analog wandering the forests of rural Arkansas. In the 80s, Bigfoot would become a kind of eco-warrior, a representation of the fragility and majesty of nature. As time has passed, Bigfoot has firmly entered the pop culture psyche and is here to stay. So what evidence do we actually have that Bigfoot exists? The most convincing that I've personally seen hails from California in 1967. Robert Pattison and Robert Gimlin were standing on a sandbar when they witnessed a large, bipedal, ape-like creature passing through a dried creek bed. The 59 seconds of footage they recorded, now referred to as the Patterson-Gimlin footage, is one of the most compelling pieces of evidence pointing towards the existence of Bigfoot. Over 50 plus years since it was filmed, no one has been able to definitively prove it as authentic or disprove it as inauthentic. Notable attempts have been made, and whether they were successfully convincing or not is entirely up to you. On an episode of the History Channel series Monster Quest, scientist Jurgen Konjak 
and Esteban Sarmiento attempted to recreate the movements shown in the Patterson-Gimlin footage. How did they accomplish this? Well, they hired a professional mime to mimic the motions in the video. Mimes are known for being able to move in many more ways than your average person, but the mime was unable to replicate the motions in the footage. Rick Baker, a special effects artist who created the lovable Bigfoot Harry in Harry and the Hendersons, went on record in 1992 that he believed the footage was fake, due to it looking like cheap, fake fur. In recent years, he has retracted this statement. Stan Winston, the visual effects juggernaut behind Terminator and three of the Jurassic Park films, had this to say. It's a guy in a bad hair suit. Sorry. If one of my colleagues created this for a movie, he would be out of business. As it stands, the Patterson-Gimlin film will remain a tantalizing bit of footage. Outside of the realm of special effects artists and into the realm of science, the Patterson-Gimlin film is viewed as a novelty, not worth the effort to properly debunk or prove. Scientists studying Bigfoot are more apt to look for tangible physical evidence. A group of scientists led by Oxford geneticist Brian Sykes sought to analyze a large group of hairs collected over time that people believe came from Bigfoot. The testing reveals something unsurprising. The hairs belong chiefly to everything except Bigfoot. Cows, raccoons, dogs, cats. You would think this landmark testing would be the death knell of Bigfoot research, but it's actually quite the opposite. People are hunting Bigfoot now more than ever, and that can, at points, be potentially dangerous. As recently as 2017, a self-reported Bigfoot shaman in North Carolina riled up a 5,700-person Facebook group by walking through the forest at night in his full shaman attire. After reports and photos started pouring in, he came forward to admit that he was conducting a Sasquatch prayer. The people who reported sightings deny that it was a shaman they saw, saying that the creature that they saw was faster than a human and covered in a long, shaggy fur that the shaman outfit didn't have. As it stands, no one is quite sure if something other than a shaman was wandering the woods of North Carolina. The Greenville Police Department, near the sighting, had a slightly more comedic take on the situation. After watching this video from nearby Boone, North Carolina, Facebook followers and friends, I think we can say with confidence that proof of Bigfoot still eludes us. If you see Bigfoot, please do not shoot at him or her as you'll be most likely wounding a fun-loving, well-intended person sweating in a gorilla costume. More and more people are gathering up their cameras and searching for Bigfoot. Entire industries are built and sustained around the hunt for the elusive beast. I could not begin to list off all of the towns in America that built their success off of the Bigfoot tourist trade. It's a mystery, but it's our mystery. We want to believe that there's still something left to find out there in the world. Something undiscovered. Maybe something dangerous. I personally, dear viewer, Believe that Bigfoot is real, but what do you think? Is there a massive, undiscovered creature roaming the primordial forests of America? Or is it just a man in a suit trying to make a buck? Let me know in the comments and on Twitter at DreadUnsolved or on Instagram at DreadTheUnsolved. I'm also on Facebook. You can send me your Bigfoot encounters to TheUnsolved at DreadCentral.com. You can catch a new episode of Dread the Unsolved every Thursday on Dread Central and YouTube. Thanks for watching.